Ladies and gentlemen, people around the world, welcome. This is the weekly beer and video review show with me, Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Reading Man Dan, a.k.a. Movie Man Dan, or just Danny Slay. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to the show. We have an amazing show lined up for you today. I got a great episode. We're going to do some fun beers and some enjoyable, thirsty suckers that I can't wait to get down. We got our one and only, eat it or not, Nate Messick's coming back for tonight's show. We got a great This Day in History, and oh, how fun it is when we go ahead and we bring in the segment, What Would You Rather? Guys, if you're new to this show, show and let me tell you a bit about what we do we go ahead and we review two beers on this show and then we talk about the videos that came out today and then i preview the video that's coming out next week on my channel all while squeezing in that stuff we just talked about like eat it or not what would you rather this day in history what are you reading what are you watching it's going to be a fun show so if you're new sit back relax and get ready if you're returning and you're watching from afar and you're here, and you're one of the old 25s, one of the original 25 people that supported me in the very beginning. Thank you so much for hopping on. I really appreciate it. This show is going to be fantastic. Without further ado, let's get started. If you're just watching, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. Smash, 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 smash that like button. And let's go ahead and get started with today's first beer. <clears throat> I'm really excited about this beer because, well, Due to the time change, I just came from my regular job. And boy, oh boy, am I parched. I'm thirsty. The whistle blow. All right, it's time to leave the yard and go get a beer down at the pub. I'm so excited to drink this beer because this beer has a bit of nostalgia. It brings back an old memories of me and my friends in the neighborhood. And every once in a while, we would try this beer. But I've never reviewed it here on this show. Um, I'm excited to go ahead and bring it to you. Guys, I'm talking about the Extra Pal from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, the famous Rolling Rock. Hey, check that baby out. Look at that. Okay. Now, I got the bigger can. Check this sucker out. It's 25 fluid ounces. Right here, I like how it says one extra ounce. Okay. But 25 is my lucky number and i'm so excited that's why i went ahead and grabbed this can and right away and take a look at this beautiful green can we're going to get into it a little bit later it's a 4.4 percent alcohol so it's not that strong but we got two cans and one let's go ahead and crack this soccer roll and then get started with today's show here we go Ooh, baby, a nice pop of the can. Sometimes you get a bit of a, a dud, a fizzle dud. And let's go ahead and take a whiff. Okay, that one right there. All right. It's a it's a quality premium smell of beer in a can that it is. Okay, rolling rock. Right away, I taste, I smell a lot of cereal, a lot of grains going on in there. Let's go ahead and try it out. I got the big guy today. All right, bringing out the Danish Fredericksburg mug that was given to me by tenacious freaking aquanauts crawl welcome welcome to the show crawl good to have you here all right this is what we're drinking the rolling rock and let's go ahead and pour it in this is pennsylvania beer take a look oh man look at this i can see that this beer is going to taste good now it looks very vibrant very yeah okay yellow yellowy I don't know if that's a, a word or not, but it looks very, very light, and that's okay. You know, we're not just doing super strong beers. Okay, it doesn't fully fill up this mega cup. Okay, Brendan, welcome to the show, Brendan. Awesome. Okay, we have Crowl is in the house, but take a look at this. This is a beautiful looking beer mug. All right, no problem, Pat. Rich Rick Fontana says he needs to crash. No problem. Hey, come on. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Okay, we have a bunch of people here in the room. All right, Kayla and Murph are here. Got to say today was a good day. That's what I like to hear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's take a look at this Rolling Rock. It's a beautiful beer in the cup. Okay, it's very light looking, but that doesn't matter. It's got a strong foam on it. Um, it's not going to be overly charged with hops. It's got, well... It's got an ice cold look to it, if you will. You know when sometimes you see a beer and you're just like, damn, 
I want that beer. It just looks ice cold. After a long day's work, you're tired, your throat's parched, and, well, you probably, like me, you had about six cups of coffee. You're ready for a different thirst quencher. So here it is, guys, from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, the Rolling Rock. Let's go ahead and take our first sip of this guy, and I'll let you know what it tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a, that, that is all right. That's Tomer. Let's answer Tomer. Tomer, hey Tomer, hey, what's going? You are on the live show right now. How are you? <laughs> okay, well, good. I'm 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 on the live show and I'm talking to you, but I have to go because the show is on. But um, but thanks for uh, calling in. Everyone, say hi to Tomer. Hi Tomer. Uh, hi Tomer, and uh, I'll call you later. All right, thank. All right, thank you. That was Tomer, guys, and he is not going to be able to make it today. All right, but wow, what a very good sip right away! It's a thirst quencher, a blast right to the palate. And guys, ah, oh, thank you so much. Come on, all right, getting the sharing the love. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thanks for hopping in. Really nice, great taste. You know, like I said, it's a famous uh, brewery in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. It's not the most elegant beer it's just the kind of beer that you want to you know have after work it's got a great taste a very green a very cereal grain taste a very cereal common taste if you will but overall delicious first sip and i'll tell you what guys we didn't see him last week and um well and, and i was gonna go yes he is behind the camera uh no problem comrade you're not too late um but you know what it's time to bring in I know Nate is not, uh, you know, going to be doing eat it or not till later in this segment. But I wanted to go ahead and bring him in right away. And guys, without er further ado, let's bring in Mr. Nate Messick to the show. Welcome, Nate. Oh, he hits us with the rolling rock. Very hits nice. With the rolling Very rock. nice. What's up? What's going on, Travel Man what? Dan? How you doing, everyone? All right. Welcome to the show, man. You got the rolling rock. Talk to me, dog. How is it? Hey, man, this brings back memories for me, too. I just heard you talking about it. And, of course, you know, I'm from Pennsylvania, which is the birthplace of Rolling Rock. Even though I was on the east side of the state, Rolling Rock is on the west side in Old Latrobe. I think near Johnstown, Pittsburgh area. You might know more than about me than that, Danny. But love Rolling Rock. Super excited to rate this thing. It's been a while since I've slammed a six-pack, and I'm going to do it tonight. Nice. Well, it's good to have you here. We certainly missed you last week. You did a little traveling, didn't you? Where did, did you go? Would you care to share to... that with us? Yeah. Went to uh, Sedona, Arizona. Uh, for those international viewers, you might have never heard of that place, but it's this little town tucked away in the beautiful high desert of northern Arizona, just outside Flagstaff, about an hour north of Phoenix. And it's just this beautiful, beautiful place, tons of positive energy, vortexes, mountains, desert, beautiful homes, beautiful people. It was awesome. Great time. Uh, that is awesome. I hear a lot of good things about it. I know it's a part of the United States that a lot of people see on puzzles, on uh, paintings, and things like that because of the epic scenery that surrounds it. And I'm glad you were able to see it, and I hope one day I'm able to see it. And, hell, I hope we're able to enjoy it together one day. I'm glad you're back for the show. And, yes, this is, um, this is the old Rolling Rock from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Guys, um, all right, welcome. It is 7 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you for so for hopping on the show, All right. um, this is what we're drinking. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and suck this one down. And uh, a lot of memories right away as I drink the Rolling Rock of, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, I grew up drinking a lot of Canadian beers like Obat and Molson. But every once in a while, we would hop to an Old Milwaukee or a Rolling Rock. So it definitely has a lot of taste to it that brings back a lot of memories. Someday you both come here in the, oh, I would love to. Yes, come on. Okay, I will definitely love to come to the Philippines and try some coconut wine. Love I will find that is love the Philippines. My family we will definitely got Philippines to my family. Yeah. We'll definitely try it. Um now moving on with the show. Uh if you haven't checked out this morning's video, I had a great time reading the book that is called The Story. Okay, let me pull this up right here. It is called The Story 
of the little mole who went in search of who done it. And this is a great little book because, uh, well, it's um, it's got some poop all over it, and that's pretty much what it, <laughs> what it's about. It's about this little mole, and he wakes up one morning out of his little hole, and he finds a turd, and it flies down. Look at it. It's like a hot dog right there. And it lands on his head, and then the whole book goes in search. Is it the pigeon? Is it, um, you know, the, the, the horse? And each little animal poops a little bit different depending on what they eat. And um, that, that's pretty much read, what the read story is. Read the first page, TMD. What? Read the first page. Oh, you guys want a first page read of this Hell one? Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Sounds awesome. All right. I'll, wa I'll watch it last night before going to sleep. That's awesome, comrade. All right, here we go. I'll give you guys a first page. Yes. The story of the little mole who went in search of who done it by Werner Holdsworth and Wolf Eicherbrock. <laughs> when little mole poked his head out of a mole hole one day to see if the sun was shining, something very strange happened. It was long and brown and looked like a little hot dog. Worst of all, <laughs> it landed right on top of little mole's head. <laughs> who dared drop that on my head? shouted little mole angrily. But being nearsighted as he was, he couldn't see who done it. All right. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Um, cheers to right. that. Yeah, cheers reading to Man that. Dan. All right. There it is. A live reading man, Dan. Cheers, brother. Cheers, Nate. Good to see you. Good to have you on here. And that is, um, if you haven't seen wow. it, check it out. One thing I want to point out about this one is um, that's all. Awesome. Awesome that you watched it last night. One thing I wanted to point out: this is the international number two best selling best selling children's book, and this was actually a gift from Denmark from Junatic. Junatic, okay. So uh, thank you so much. I know that it's four a.m. in Denmark. Uh, so if you happen to watch the replay, Junatic, thank you so much for this precious gift. Now you. I have eternalized it in my own video, and um, it's such a fun book. You got you got to check it out. Um, what does it say? Maybe I did. Maybe I did poop. What is that? <laughs> okay, come on. Maybe you did. Hey, Nate, call Danny for the show. He forgot. Are you not showing up? <laughs> is it know. just me, me sitting here? <laughs> I, I don't know. Guys, can you see me? Yeah, can, can somebody see me? Yeah. Uh oh. You look good on my stream, Danny. Very strange. Okay, let me know in the chat, in the comments below, can you guys see me? Because Barrow uh, said, um, hey, Nate, call Danny for the show. I think he forgot, and it makes me wonder. Sometimes we have some glitches that we're not aware of until you guys you're like, yeah. You're, dude, you're on, dude. You're good. Okay, so maybe, maybe it's something going on in India. Whatever it is, Barrow, I'm here. Uh, Nate's here. Kamad's here. And uh, let's get the, let's get the Rolling show. Rolling Rock's going. here. Rolling Rock, what up, Rolling Rock? Good choice. Okay. Um, yeah. So, guys, another thing I want to talk about is well, here in the United States, it looks like the mask is getting off, and uh, we're getting back to normal. So, wherever you guys are, I hope that you guys are uh, doing well. Uh, you're passing through COVID in terms of how your country and your precautions and what you're doing to stay safe. If you're getting vaccinated or not, it's none of my damn business. I was vaccinated. I feel a little more comfortable going out. And I think that the restrictions and, and the cases are going down because of the vaccination. So it looks like we're getting back to normal. So what does that mean? What is what what is this all about? And that means Travel. Oh, yeah. Travel man, Dan, baby. Hell yeah. Where do you want to go, Travel man, Dan? Oh, man. It's got a lot of spots. Got a lot, a lot of spots. I'm thinking about going next week to my favorite place in the world. If you don't know, it is called Yosemite National. No, <laughs> no, but New Jersey's not bad. It's called Yosemite National Park. It's in yeah. California. It's about five hours. So I have a, a, a holiday. I'm going to start there. Uh, I'm thinking about going to. Hawaii, okay. Um, there's parts of Asia that dip in. I just don't know if I have enough vacation. We'll see. But overall, I feel like uh, things are going back to normal. So I'm they excited are. about that. Nate, how do you feel? How are things in Vegas? I 
I wish no more masks here at all. Yeah. Nate. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's funny. So at the start of the week, um, I started going into grocery, grocery stores and whole foods and that kind of, those kinds of places, not wearing a mask and nobody said a thing, uh, this week. And I would say probably the majority of people, 60, 70% are still masked up, but this is really the first week where it's starting to be not 95%. So there's definitely a trend going on. Yeah, it's one of those things that, um, you know, I am I know that they said take your mask off, but just for the sake of people and getting into arguments with people at supermarkets, at uh, convenience stores, I'm just wearing a mask till everyone stops wearing a mask. Um, and the United States can be a little tricky with that and, you know, you just it's not that big of a deal for me to wear it or not wear it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's Carl you know, says, it's, yeah, it's, finally it's, a long time without Nobody actually says anything. Yeah, That's Kral, the funny you know. Thing. Yeah. Kral says, yeah, long time. You know, we've been putting out some Travel Man Dan videos, except for the thing is, is I, I haven't really traveled outside of los angeles extensively in the last year so yes it's been a year and that's okay um i'm not sure where i'm going to get going because i have to do this channel i have to stay here so we're going to continue to go on and like i said to nate and many other people crow i'm in this for the long haul so hang in there we're going to be traveling the world i'm going to go to see as many places as i possibly can and i hope that i can make cool videos for you to watch so thanks to you um no gust today always thank you for liking my comments oh thank you so much yeah absolutely no gust today um borrow unfortunately the person i had lined up couldn't make it a little it bit late for them so we'll, we'll have somebody tomorrow don't you worry we'll keep the show rolling and have fun um and now moving on okay uh I don't know if you guys know this or not, but today is a very special day. Um, th today is the 21st day of the 21st week of the 21st year of the 21st century. It's a lot of 21st. That's a lot of 21st, guys. I thought I would just drop that on you. Nobody else is impressed, huh? Okay. Well, there it is. I thought I would let you know. Um, Nate, what do you think of that? Uh, it's probably the 21st coolest thing I heard today. <laughs> well, well, how about it? Good good for you, my friend. How about a little rolling <laughs> rock? <laughs> there it is. There it is. All right. Okay. 21 seconds. Go for it. No, we're going to get in that a little bit. I feel like it's got a really lush flavor to it. It's got... Something in it that I really, you know what you're going to get with this beer. Rolling Rock is not going to overwhelm you. It's just an easy, smooth beer. But there is something yeah. lush. There is something lavish going on with the flavor. And I, and I really enjoy it. It, it kind of reminds right. me of a, a Chinese beer, Danny. I, I, get, the, I get like a feeling of a, a Suntory or a Harbin kind of. It has that light, dry kind of flavor. That is true. That, you know? Yeah, it is a bit of a, it is considered a dry pal al. Okay, so it is a dry hop beer. Um, Nate is always the best guest. Yeah, I agree, Barrow. Always, always, always a pleasure to have him here. Um, you know, definitely is becoming a staple. Uh, he's a staple of the show. He's already a yeah, staple. So thank you so much. Let's go on to the next one. Bubba. Yes, Bubba. welcome. Welcome to the show, Bubba. All right, we've got some Buffalo folks in the house. All right. Guys, the next thing I want to talk to you about, I don't know if you paid any attention to, in the sky, now there's a lot of leaks going out there. Of There's been quite a few UFO sightings off the coast of California. Okay? Now, I am not talking about just your ordinary UFO sightings. I'm talking about naval command ships that are finding, like, super technology where they're finding foreign unidentified objects flying over the water, and then they just disappear okay like huge crafts and all these um recordings and all these uh data and all this stuff is being released now and it's out in the open that all this stuff is is coming out there and then what that does is that brings a lot of other people that have always said that hey 
you know what? There's UFOs out there and stuff like that. That brings them to the forefront to say, yeah, you know, I saw the same thing 15 years ago. I just think we're crazy. What do you guys think? What is the, what is your opinion, Nate? What do you think about all this? Um, are we alone out there, or, or what do you think? And well, to be honest with you, I don't know much about what you're talking about. Uh, before the show even started, you had mentioned that you were going to say something about UFOs, and I was like, "There's UFOs." <laughs> but uh, but overall, yeah. of course, you know, of course, this is a huge universe out there, and I think you'd be silly not to suggest that something's going on. And if we were, if there was visitors here, number one, I'd be super excited about it. Number two, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Yeah, it's um, it's always been the subject of, you know, discussion, right? I mean, but there's got to be something else, and and what do they do, and then and why are all these reports coming out? Who knows? Um, I will tell you this, and this uh, Kral, you're gonna like this one if you're like a travel man, Dan. Check out this place. It is called Giant Rock. Okay, it's a, it's, it's it's this giant rock. It's out in the desert, about two hours from here. And people flock to it, especially in the early 40s, to go ahead and, um, well, to see uh, UFOs and aliens. It was a hotbed for uh, intergalactic alien activity, so they say. I mean, all these people, it's this giant rock, would go to this giant rock. And I'm going to go, it's in Landers, California. And that's going to be one of my travel episodes. And, um, guys, if, you, if you've been following me for a while, you know I was traveling i did seven countries in one year and over the last year i've only been doing places like you know around california and, and los angeles but we are going to continue expanding but while it's still even while i'm still here i'm going to still do all these fun cool places like giant rock and yosemite so stay tuned for that um hopefully i might be able to see something but i don't want them to take me away what do you think nate double negative are you going to do double yeah, negative? We're not alone. Yeah, it's a double that. You know? So, but yeah, when it, when it comes to, dude, I'm excited. I, I want to see, uh, I got to go check this UFO stuff out because I do like it. I don't know if you know who, is it Bob Lazer, Bill Lazer, Lazar? Bill uh, Lazar. I know he's been on Joe Rogan before. Yeah, Bill Lazar. He's a, he's a little bit of a weirdo. I like that. And uh, he seems like a guy that would be knowledgeable on aliens, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, alien people are great. Um, I love it. Um, I you love know, it. They're either really way, way, way out there, but then every once in a while they say some things that are like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Nicholas, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for well, having you know on. What, you know what, Danny? They, they say things that, that come true, you know, which is the, the craziest part about it. And it's everybody calls you a conspiracy theorist until those conspiracies come true. <laughs> Yeah, it's just there's so much stuff out there of different personalities, of different people from different yep. areas, all That's saying right. the same thing, that right. they saw this thing and it hovered and whatever. And, you know, and, and there's been reports of like people uh, don't remember what happened. They just remember seeing a light. And the next thing you know, they're found in a, a town three miles away. There's all kinds of stuff. So like to have over the last whatever 50 60 years to have so many people report this i gotta say we, there, there must be something out there uh, i don't know where it is oh you're welcome borrow i appreciate it borrow, you're thank awesome, you for man. listening yeah borrow is awesome but yeah hey, we're gonna find out check it out i just wanted to know what you guys thought of that on the weirder side of things here in the united states i found this weird piece of news a man from maine Okay, who had claimed he was being attacked by zombies and droids when firing a gun into the air in a supermarket store parking lot in Maine. And, you know, he was arrested. He, they were able to calm him down. He was obviously not right in the head. Um, he thought zombies were attacking him, so he picked up a gun and started shooting it. Um, you know, I just always thought I would bring up the weird and unusual. Um, so since he's talking about... Uh, aliens, and then we're talking now about crazy people. How do you feel about zombies? Do you think they're out there? Do you think that we're going to be taken over by zombies? Or hell, do you think we're going to get droids to take over, Nate? I don't know. Was he at a Walmart? <laughs> no. He was at uh, some weird shopping mart in, uh, I, in yeah, Maine. I, man, 
what am I? What's my view on zombies? It's great TV. <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty good. Hey guys, <laughs> now I want to go ahead and bring Nate out of here for one quick second All because right. I'm gonna give him a proper intro. And you know what time it is for the show? It's time for. for Eat it or not, well, what will he do? Or will he eat those bugs or will he give them to you? We don't know what he'll do, but let's hang on for you. Let's see what <laughs> he's going to do. Eat it or not with you. Nate Messick, welcome to Eat It or Not. Hey, 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 hey. hey what's going on? Hey, hey. First of all, Travel Man Dan, thank you so much for the incredible song that you just ad-libbed for me. And uh, welcome, everybody, to my <laughs> segment of uh eat it or not sorry about last week i apologize for not being on i was on a trip with my family down to sedona arizona as i said before and because i wasn't here i feel like i need to pay some sort of penalty so i thought to myself you know the last time we were here i was thinking you know i i combined the beer and the food to kind of pair together which is something i might do a little bit more of in the future and i thought maybe i would do that for this episode and i was like I think I got to do something to show that I really missed being here last week. And that means pain. pain. So, yeah. So, what I'm sure got? a lot of you have watched the little Nitro video. This is something very similar to that. So, inside the little Nitro, there's probably the equivalent of like four or five Carolina Reapers, which is the hottest pepper in the world. Well, I found from Las Vegas, Nevada, a challenge called the Inferno <laughs> Curry Challenge, okay? And this oh, is a, from a place man. called Mint Bistro on the west side of Las Vegas. $23 for this. Oh, Look my God. This thing. What is it? That is lamb. What is it? It's lamb curry, right, with Carolina Reapers. They have a they have a like a placard on the wall, a wall of fame of people that were able to complete this, and there's like six people. So the whole idea is if you can eat this, hey, hey, hey. Rocco, 15, Rocco, what's going on, man? Rocco, can you do this? Show Rocco what you got, man. Rocco can't oh, do man. it. There it is. What do you bro. got, man? Rocco? Can you handle it? But anyway. So this thing, the whole idea is eat this thing in like 15 minutes. If you win, you get a $50 Amazon card. If you lose, you pay the bill. And, of course, you are shamed for all of eternity. I'm going to try Wait. and eat this. Hold on again. So $50 Amazon, how, is it only if you eat it at the restaurant? Yeah, of course. So when I, when I went, uh, I, I did gloss over one little point here. I had to sign an actual waiver to get this food. So typically what they'd have you do is you go into the what? restaurant. Yeah, you go into the restaurant. Uh, they have the wall up there. If you win, you get a T-shirt, you get a picture on the wall, and you get a $50 Amazon card. And I asked the guy, I was like, can I take this out of here? He's like, sure, you can, but you got to sign this waiver. And it took me like five minutes. <laughs> I had to go through. It was two pages. Basically a disclaimer, or not disclaimer, uh, a way to get them out of any liability if I get sick or hurt. Oh, man. Or worse. Okay, I I got a couple of questions for you real quick before you get started. One, if you guys are ever in Las Vegas, I'll be sure to go ahead and put down the link to the website. If you're interested in the description, you can find out where this place is if you're yeah. interested and eat it. Um, Bubba says this must be good. I'm not really sure about that. So, Nate, you and I did the little nitro, and that was the hottest friggin' thing I've ever eaten in my life. Um this one's going to be hot. Now, that's a little gummy bear. You're looking at a plate full of food. That's a lot of food. It's got to go down through the neck, down and through the esophagus. Whoa, cruise around here for a little bit. Okay, run around here, and then boom, boom, bam. That is going to be one explosion. Are you ready for it? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, I'm not I'm not doing the competition here, all right? You know, I'm not trying to eat this thing uh, in five minutes or whatever. I'm just – I'm going to try – I'll do my best. I'll eat some of it. I have a feeling but from the smell, guys. So just – I haven't even described what this thing is. 
It's lamb. Yeah, describe curry. it. Talk yeah, us so through I got it. The lamb curry. There, there's probably there's one container of rice in here. I brought it home, right? So we got one container of rice and then one thing of curry that I just jumped dumped on top, microwaved it for a little bit just to give it some heat. <laughs> oh, he's gonna yeah. What's this? What? What's this? Is it stinky? Does it smell like tobacco? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Doesn't smell like tobacco. <laughs> Little nitro definitely smelled like tobacco. This smells like straight up peppers. All right, so I'm gonna just I'm just gonna hop right into this. Danny, am I a little bit dark here? Should I get some more light? Yeah, well, you're a little dark, but that's okay. How's that? Much better. All right, there you go, guys. Wow. Okay, let me get a poll. Okay, hold on a minute. Are you guys ready? Baro, is this doing you ju any justice? Baro likes the spicy food. Would you eat it or not? Okay. Hey, Nate, buddy. Let's see what, oh, buddy, let's see what you got. Look at this thing. Ooh, that's just sitting right on top. Hey, okay. You know you got to eat. Oh, he did it. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. I killed that, bro. All right, that was easy. All right. So one big chunk of lamb. I got some rice in here. Some curry sauce. Looks like maybe. I gotta say, it looks. I gotta say, it looks. It looks really good. Oh, <laughs> Shrackle Sh says shitter's full. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh man. First of all, it's hot. Oh man, hot. Yeah, that's hot, dude. Um, what can you tell by my eyes? Yeah, they're glossy. So it, it tastes really good. The flavor is actually, I'm surprised how much I really like the flavor, but it's hot. I think you could do all of it. He's I'm good, give, folks. I'm going to give it a good run. I'm going to tell you right now, I, I've never seen anybody capable of eating hot foods like Nate. Like I know there's people out there that would destroy Nate, but yeah. I've never seen it with my own eyes. Until... The little nitro came along. The little nitro damaged him. I was there. I did it with him. But you seem to be handling that curry pretty good. No, I'm not. It's not good. Oh man, no. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Oh, oh man. Holy shit. Oh the mouth. <laughs> the mouth no. Is it hot? Oh, <sighs> uh, okay. So oh man. Oh, yeah, it's hot. I'm not going to miss another episode, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Swing it down. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. If you just hop around the show, this is Peter Not. We're going a little slower. We're drinking the Rolling Rock from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Delicious beer. Uh, nice, dry, hopped pale ale. It's got a smooth cereal grain taste. Just a really nice flow to it. And my friend over there to the uh, left of me is on fire. Uh, oh, man. Okay. Uh, Crow says Crow says he wants the spicy chocolate one. Nice, Crow. Well, I'll tell you what. If I ever make it to uh, uh, UAB, the United Emirates, I'll definitely bring you one of those white chocolates. Nate, uh, how are we doing? Uh, <laughs> is it hot? I can't talk. You were doing so good in the beginning. All right. Anyway, yeah. So, unless you're like me, sadist that likes to be in pain, don't do uh, it. Oh, yeah. You're really watering up. Bubba <sighs> says, hang in there. No, please. Okay. <sighs> Oh, oh no, he's flexing muscles. Dude, Craig Anderson says PA beer is the best. 
Don't worry, we're doing the Rolling Rock now. We have a special episode the next time I, I'm in I'm in Las Vegas. We're gonna be doing it all Pennsylvania with yinglings and cheesesteaks. It's gonna be awesome. Look at my friend over there. How you doing? How is it? Eat it or not? Eat it or not? Are you gonna take it or what? Oh, the hiccups. <laughs> okay. It's starting to subside a little bit. Okay, it's is it time for another bite? Do you think you could maybe try another spoonful or two? No. <laughs> I, I, I have to th I gotta throw on the white towel, man. This is Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. no wonder they had to oh man. What's bad about it? Yeah, what's bad about it? <laughs> <laughs> Nitro. Hey, Cindy. Cindy, your husband's on fire, but he, he's, you might have to wash the sheets tomorrow. It's going to be. <laughs> so, Cindy asked Nate, is it going to be. Is it the nitro or the curry? Which is more? The nitro. No. Nitro. Okay. The nitro, the nitro. Oh man, man oh. the the nitro got me deep in the chest and the stomach. This is just in the mouth. You know, I, I hold on a second. Okay, a man is a man needs a break, guys. That's why we're going to continue on. Hope you're enjoying the show. Like I said before, we're reviewing the Rolling Rock. Eat it or not, he skipped a week. Just we decided to punish him. Um, but I hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're having fun. It's almost time. Well, it actually is time to roll into my favorite segment. That is, what would you rather? Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you five questions. You can answer them in the chat, or the best thing to do is wait till the show is over and then go ahead and put down in the comment section your answers to these five questions. Now, there's no right or wrong, guys. This is just much rather. It's fun. It's uh, shooting the shit. It's frolicking. It's just kind of just talking. So don't feel like you need to be hung up on an answer. And it's always fun to answer question number five. And we got a great one today. So here we go. Nate, I don't know where he is. He stepped out for a minute. But we're going to continue so that we continue to run the show. And then we're not running overboard. So Nate is back. Nate, it's time. <laughs> yeah, you look like. You look like little Mick from uh, Mike Tyson's right. punch out. Like literally, you look like him in the face and you look like him with that towel. But you keep sucking on a towel. It's time for what would you rather? Here we go, guys. Question number one Where would you rather go? Why? Because with Travel Show, we always talk about where would you rather go. And today, we're talking about the countries that begin with the letter K. Where would you rather go? Would you rather go to Kosovo? which is a small little republic, formerly part of Yugoslavia. It's next to Serbia. It's an interesting place. Um, they, they got, uh, you know, that culture, that Balkan culture. Next, you can go to Croatia, too. Um, but I'm talking about Kosovo. I don't know much about it, but would you rather go to Kosovo or would you rather go to Kuwait? <sighs> wow. Okay, how about that? a cool little eastern country? You can go out and you can do falconing, right? Where you go out hunting with a giant golden eagle falcon. Which country go? For me, it's it's a tough one because I do want to see that area. I do want to see um, former Yugoslavia. I think that's a really cool place to go. Oh, no, we're getting some lag. Are you hearing me okay? I can hear you. All right, there we go. The lag is over, guys. I do want to see the place. I work with somebody from that area. I was friends with somebody from that area. I, I have good friends from that area back. These. So, wait. Okay, something I pulled prior to Kosovo or Kuwait. Hey, you with us? Yeah. Hey, Baro. This is for you, buddy. Cindy got it for me. 
Thanks, Sydney. Oh, I believe you, Crow. I heard it's hot there. Um, Nate, where would you rather go, Kosovo or Kuwait? I don't know, dude. Kansas. <laughs> oh, he picks another K. He's flipping the script. His mind is infected <laughs> by devils. Going oh, on did. to question number two. Uh, question number two is the food question. Okay. This is I'm talking about cereal, right? I'm talking about morning breakfast. You wake up in the morning. Oh, honey, how about some eggs? All right. But no, this particular breakfast, which one would you rather have? Would you rather have this delicious, plentiful bowl of oatmeal? And look at this super stacked bowl of oatmeal, right? We have raspberries. We have blueberries. We have almonds. We have almond halves. We have little chocolate chips in there. And, um, well, we're using soy milk. So this isn't the regular oatmeal. Nate, what do you think of that? Would you eat that or not? Holy cow. That is an awesome-looking breakfast oatmeal bonanza right there. That is yeah, one, number that one. Great. That was great. Or would you rather eat this one, guys? A little more on the sugary side, <laughs> but just as good. I'm talking about super-powered French toast, okay? Whipped cream, okay? we got blueberries, blackberries. I think this might even be a cherry. A whipped cream stacked high. Poured in Canadian syrup. Wow. Holy cow. How do you pick? Where do you go? Well, look at, look at that face, dude. That's a hot face. Oh, he is impressive. Guys, my, 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 my feet, I feel swollen in the face. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and answer this one. We're coming back to you, my friend. So, guys, this one's tough because both of these have delicious fruits on them. The only thing that I would say that I would definitely – want to change if you took this french toast okay and you took off some of that fruit and you exchanged it with butter okay i absolutely love butter oatmeal is great especially when i'm training but i'm doing this all the way look at that guy french toast super duper okay <laughs> bubba says i'll take one of each cindy wants the french toast oh man it looks amazing Bubba, nice call. But, yeah, I think I would go with the French toast and add some butter. Nate, which one would you pick? Are you going with the French toast or are you going with the oatmeal? You know what? The oatmeal looks like it's got milk in it, so right now I'm going with the oatmeal. <laughs> okay. Actually, the oats might cool your mouth down. How are we doing? Kral says French toast. Very nice. Good choice, Kral. What do you think, Nate? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm, I'm starting, starting to, starting to kind of go away a little bit. I had to go to the bathroom. Sorry for that, guys. I had to get a towel and I ran it under water because I just needed something cold. Yeah, but I don't recommend doing it. It's not fun. Give me the granola, Danny. <laughs> okay, sounds good, my friend. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, question number three, guys. I'm going all the way back to 1994. <laughs> Which movie? Which movie would you prefer to watch? 1994 Pulp Fiction or 1994 Forrest Gump? Okay, both great movies, both iconic, you know, directors, just an amazing movie. It's a tough call because Pulp Fiction really changed the game in a lot of things. But Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump for me is is one of my top favorite movies. The way that it was written the way that Tom Hanks played it. I love the story because just when you thought something would, would wind up and you so you connect the dots and you connect them fast. It wasn't like you connected them uh, after you watch movie two to, and you connected the dots to movie one. No, it happened in the same movie. You would watch 20 minutes of the movie and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, okay. And then 20 minutes more, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It was like all these like whammers. So definitely for me, whammers. Forrest Gump. What's that? Whammers. Whammers, knockers. Okay, so Nate, which one are you going with, Forrest Gump or Pulp Fiction? Can I can I get one question on this, Danny? Yes, you can. Am I watching it for the first time or as a rerun? It's a good question. Solid question. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, rerun because you don't you already seen them. Then Pulp Fiction, because I think it that's exactly what it's for. 
and it has Ooh. the lasting kind of effect about it. Um, there's an impact there. It's carried the test of time, I think. Whereas Forrest Gump, I probably would have went with if it was the single view, because I think the the nostalgia from that, uh, just the time period that it was in, and what the you know the whole the arc of the story was, would have probably hit me harder in one view. But if I had to do the rerun, Pulp Fiction. <clears throat> Interesting. Good, good, good point. I definitely agree that that is a solid point. All right. Question number four. Question number four. Which would you rather? Would you rather listen to on your phone or on your box or wherever you do in your car, uh, Spotify or Apple Music? All right, which do you prefer? I know the options are out there. I went with Spotify for a little while. I went with Pandora for a little while. But for me, I, it, the easiest, simplest thing, and I, I guess maybe middle-aged people are made fun of for this uh, amongst youngsters, but Apple Music to me is awesome. So for me, it's Apple Music. What about you, Nate? Yeah, I don't care what youngsters think. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Apple Music. But that's only because I don't really know the reason why people like Spotify. I haven't figured that out yet. There must be something that I'm completely missing. So for me, I remember when I first got you know the first iPod. I remember that thing with the wheel and the dial. So I'm yeah. sticking with Apple. Yeah, okay. Crowell says Spotify. You're right. I, I don't know what people see in that. I tried them both, and I didn't pay for them. I pay for Apple, and it's probably um, the easiest three bucks a month and no-brainer of anything that I pay. Anyway, moving on, we're going to go on to question number five. This is the fun one. We're starting to get into the earlier days of when the Travel Man Dan Weekly Beer and Video Review Show had a more disgusting approach. And here is question number five. <laughs> a big, deep breath from my friend to the left of me as he yes. sucks in a little bit of air and tries to exchange that inferno going on beneath his teeth with a little bit of new air. All right, question number five. Would you rather go to the local mall, whatever city you live in, whatever country you live in, go to the local mall and find a random person and put on their COVID mask. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> you got you to wear it, dude. You got to wear that person's COVID mask right on their face, dude. Okay. Somebody, I don't know. You go, so you go with somebody, anybody, you don't know if they've been sneezing on it. They've probably been wearing it for more than 10 minutes. But would you rather wear that person's COVID mask or this is for 24 hours or their underwear? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is easy for me. <laughs> you know, me and my me and my coworker, Rich, we went through this with the girls. and They thought it was disgusting when an answer. Me and him answered real quick. First thing I listen to a lot of European... I filmed them more. Okay. So maybe it's a uh, variety. Maybe Spotify offers more. Oh, my God. Kral says, my God. That's what I'm talking about, Kral. It's, um, it's a tough one. It's gross. It's disgusting. But for me, it's um, it's definitely the mask. And and I pray that you don't have COVID. And I pray that you're not sneezing. And I pray that you're not. I Sometimes I find myself going like this inside my mask. <laughs> <laughs> like opening my mouth and Ooh, uh, that's that's the open mouth syndrome. I've been talking about that for a year. I catch myself yeah, doing yeah. it all the time. I'm I'm on live YouTube right now. I'll call you later. Bye. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. You're wearing a mask and you're breathing, but somebody else's underwear. Jeez, man, who knows what's going on in that business? So for me, I'm going fast. Nate, what are you going with? I'm the opposite, dude. I'm Ooh. going. I'm going. I'm going crotch stink. And oh let, let, let me tell you why. Oh, because tell us, first tell of us, all, my... everybody's balloon knot stinks. Oh. But when you go up to the mouth region, that's a different kind of brutal. When you got someone's mouth no, that's dude. disgusting. No, I'd rather smell poop than no. bad breath. You don't so just no, smell I, it. No. For me, you're wearing, their, you're wearing their underwear, so you're not probably smelling it. But maybe nope. it's their nope. their thing. Their breath, extra meat mouth, is touching breath you. Is, is worse than the butt. For <laughs> no, for no, me. because they might have they might have put some skids on it, right? And then it's touching your. I'd rather that. I'd rather that 
What about then, actually like, even shoving down their pie hole? No, I'm not okay. And then what if they were horny that day and they had like a, a, a you know a pre pre thing going on? It was <laughs> yeah, I'm, dude. I'm I'm telling you, I would go for the I would go for the underwear. I'll wear them over my head, dude. Tidy whities oh. over my head before I wore someone else's disgusting mask, which they wear for two weeks, three weeks, a month straight. At least the underwear is only seven eight hours. Yeah, but it's what they do in that underwear. Anyway, guys, be sure to go ahead and answer that if you want. Baba shows a green puke face. He said. <laughs> <laughs> Baba remembers the early days. Guys, this is what we're drinking, Rolling Rock. Let's go ahead and whack it down, and it's time to give this sucker a score. Here we go. Yep. This is going to score pretty good for me, I think. There's a lot of nostalgia with this beer. A lot of corn in this beer. Do you taste corn? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do. I taste it. I I, I think that's the green bottle, though, Danny. I don't know if a lot of the no, viewers out there, there is a difference in the green bottle flavor than there is a brown or a white clear bottle. Um, there's it's, kind of a, there's a skunk to it almost, but it's not an offensive skunk. Yeah, it's definitely the dominant taste. Here's my thing. We got the scorecard. Here we go, guys. This is what I want to talk to you about. Right away, the taste to me, I can taste that it's a dry beer. I don't know what it is, but I have a good taste for this kind of thing. I uh, like the Japanese Sapporo. I think this beer really nails it. Now that I'm more educated in a sense of what a beer tastes like and what they're actually doing when they brew it, I don't, I'm not saying I'm a connoisseur or a professional, but I definitely understand what's a lager and what's a brown ale and what's a dry beer like this one. Nate's right. It's got a fever of corn tasting to it. I taste a lot of grassiness. It's light. It's refreshing. It's got a crisp taste. Overall, it's a quality beer. I think it's something that if you're going to a party and you pick up a 12-pack, nobody's ever going to say anything. Yep. They might even give you a pat on the back. Hey, yep. a rolling rock. And for that, I think that's really good. I think the taste is, um well, it, like I said before, it's got a lushness to it. It's got something in it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just really nice. And um, yes. of the cheaper, of the more common beers, I think it's really one of the more quality beers that you're going to taste. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and give it a 4.0. Nate, what do you got? This is for taste, right, Danny? So <clears throat> for taste, taste yeah, yeah I, I kind of agree with you. I got to give it a, a, a strong score. I'm going to do a, a, a 4.0 as well. Um, what I really like about it, because Rolling Rock kind of categorizes in that PBR, Old Milwaukee type range of beer. It's not at the same level as a Bud Light Miller, or sorry, Budweiser Miller type level. But for what you're getting and for the price that we'll talk about later, taste-wise, this beer is awesome. I love it. It brings back a lot of memories, 4.0. Great. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to get into is the price. Okay, now the price. I, didn't, I bought this 25-ounce can because lucky number 25, they give you an extra ounce. So that's uh, two beers in one, right? Now, I bought this at uh, a, a Ralph's supermarket near my work on my lunch break, and it was two for $7, so three fifty. Now, break that down into a beer. Per beer, you're looking at $1.75, but they give you that extra ounce, two for seven. I feel like you're walking out of there for 7 bucks, getting two of these, feeling good if you drink them if you buy for fourteen dollars you're going to get four can and you're going to get rocked i think it's a really good price i think it's a great idea that they sell these giant cans with the one extra ounce and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to give it also a 4.0 nate what do you got uh for the price so i got a six pack and i'm winding it down okay um, 7.99 for a six pack which i think is a phenomenal price uh, so I'm going to give it a 4.5 for price. Uh, now, it bang for your buck. I will say this. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, Danny, I'm going to do an adjustment, 4.0, because oh, okay. it's only a 4.4% ABV. So maybe that is indicative of the price. Maybe the old school impact of the beer is indicative of the price, but it's a fairly priced beer. I like it, 4.0. Yeah, and that's, that, is, uh, that is something that you want to bring up. 
in terms of where you are as, as a beer drinker. Now, some people don't like the powerful beers. Yep. Me and you, we like the smack in the face from a good beer, a strong beer. So that actually weighs in the favor of if you're a stronger beer. That's why we always bring up what the percent of alcohol is. But some, some people just like a nice beer, almost like a summer shandy, right? Yep. They like a light beer like that. Rolling Rock is underrated. I like it. Great comment, Baba. Definitely. Um, now let's go to the next item, and that is the design. Okay. Now, typically, in Nate's case, I don't like green bottles. There's something about the light refraction. It does some weird thing. And if it doesn't, it still psychologically does some weird thing that skunks the beer. But I'm talking about this particular can. Let's take a look at this. This is a gorgeous green metallic shine to it. I love it. It's got a horse. I enjoy horses. It's got Latrobe, Pennsylvania, <laughs> established in 1939. I love the color scheme. I like the fonts going on with it. Really, really nice can. And I'm talking strictly can, not bottle. What I'm drinking here. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3.5. Nate, what do you got? 5.0. Five, what? 5.0. This right here. Are you pretty? No. Nope. What? It's a quintessential beer. This is a beer bottle. This is the way it's supposed to be. This oh is a classic all-time beer bottle. Green, pronounced, um, poetic almost in my opinion. There's something going on here that I love. It's from Pennsylvania. I'm slightly biased. It's a 5.0. I love this bottle. I wish more beer makers had bottles like this. Wow. You went hard, bro. You went hard. Okay. Dude, it's a, I like it's it. An awesome bottle. Okay. All right. Let's get into accessibility. Accessibility. This beer, and I was talking with my Uncle John earlier, is a, well, it's widely popular in the eastern, northern part of the United States. But you can find it all the way in California. You can find it in Nevada. I'd be willing to bet that you can find it in any metropolitan city in the United States. So I got to rank that at a pretty high. You could probably find it in Canada, and you might be able to find it in a lot of places like the bigger cities in Mexico. Now, Europe's going to be a little harder. But since it's a probably accessible in other countries, I'm going to go ahead and give it a slight rating of a bit higher than I normally would. So instead of it being only a North American strength and, and, and central focal point being strong here, I think that you can find it in other places around the world. I think you will be able to find it in a lot of places, especially in Western Europe, your Italy's, your France's, your Germany's. So I think it's a pretty accessible beer when you look at it like that. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and give it a score of a 3.0. Nate, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going to knock it for accessibility, um, meaning I'm not going to give it a 5.0 uh, because it is just under those mass-produced beers like a Budweiser and a Miller. Um, so I'm going to ding it just a little bit to 4.0. And I, I kind of disagree. I don't think this is anywhere internationally. And when I mean anywhere, I, I would say it's in just, just major cities in like, you know, um, package stores where you can mix and match bottles of beer or something like that. I, I don't think this is something that you're going to find in Madrid, for example. Um, it's going to be in select places, 4.0 for me. Hmm, interesting. Okay. And now let's go to the travel man, Dan factor. Now, like I said before, I love this can. One, this can is great. I like that it's larger. It's got two two can uh, two bottles in it. One thing I definitely really like is the Foster's oil can. I think um. Being that I grew up drinking this beer, I think when you say Rolling Rock, I don't know what it is about Rolling Rock, but when you tell people I'm doing Rolling Rock, they go, they go like this, like almost everyone, Rolling Rock. Like they give you this, like, roll, you got the Rolling Rock. They give you this weird, like, like they're excited for you to be drinking this beer. And um, for me, I think it's a really a well established beer here in the United States. Everybody knows it, and it, it kind of is push to the back shelf but it's making a comeback kind of like pbr did it's not of the more common beers but it is if that makes any sense it's not your budweiser it's not your miller and it's not your Coors. it's in the next shelf up um it's just a really interesting beer overall i am impressed with the way it tasted i'm impressed with pretty much everything about it and i'm gonna go ahead and give it a score of a 3.5 nate what do you got yeah for uh test bunnies 
factor. Um, eat it or not factor. I'm going to do a 4.5. The only reason I'm not doing a 5.0 is I can't somehow – I can't do two 5.0s in one score. Oh, um, you can't. Why? Leave it open. You might do it later. But I, I just – I love – there's a nostalgia to this beer for me. I love on the back of the bottle here. Let me read it to you. From the glass line tanks of Old Latrobe, we tender this premium beer for your enjoyment as a tribute to your good taste. It comes from the – it comes from the mountain springs to you, 33. That's awesome, 4.5. Wow. Wow, that's cool. Do you think that the uh, the, the flavor and the, the high score has anything to do with the heat in your mouth? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you know, guys, <laughs> you're nervous. Everyone has to score a beer and drink a bunch of curry. I don't think he was <laughs> he wasn't looking for that curveball. Anyway, I pulled up the score. It did very well, guys. Thanks for watching this first segment. This is the Rolling Rock, and it scored an 18. Whoa, that's awesome. That's a great score. Nate, what'd you give it? 21 and a half, and it deserved every point. What? 21 and a half? Dude, you know what? Now that I've gone back to this. It might become my my daily drinker of choice. Daily drinker, but it might become my 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 go to light beer of choice. Wow, I'm serious. It's, it's good. It's got, there, there's a depth to it. There's a there's a taste to it that feels elevated compared to an old Milwaukee or a PBR for, for my. And I think Danny, I think it has to do with the green bottle. I think my experience drinking that green wow. bottle is different than yours drinking the can. I hate the green bottle, but hey, you know that's that's what we're here for. That I believe is the highest score you've ever given. The highest score ever on the show um, it was number one at twenty one, and that was the Murphy's Irish Stout. And then number two was a tie between Duckzilla and Little Something Somehow. So you Little have the highest good. ranks. Little Something Something was great, but um, yeah, it's all right, guys. It's a good now it's time for the second beer, and we're going to go ahead and test something out. Uh, so after we're done with the first beer, we're all going to have like a – I'm working through the kinks right now, but I'm going to be doing like like a Pledge of Allegiance to beer, kind of like a seventh inning stretch where we all stand up, we get ready for the second part of the show, and we pledge our allegiance for the love of beer. So stay tuned for that. That is definitely coming. It's going to be a fun segment. You're going to love it. It's going to be like a quick, like, two-minute thing where we stand up and we praise beer and we love it. And, uh, well, it's a fun show, and we, it's my show, and we get to do whatever we want, and that's what I want to do. But until then, let's continue on, and let me introduce you guys to the next segment of the show, which is the show and tell. We didn't even do the show and tell. I skipped right over it, guys. I got to pee. Uh, Okay, go ahead and pee, guys, or go ahead and pee, Nate. This is what we're doing for show and tell. I wanted to bring this to light. I'm so excited about this. Guys, uh, you know, I love doing the creation, and like Kral said, Travel Man Dan hasn't been traveling around the world, but I have been traveling through California. we got some fun stuff coming up because I had just purchased the old GoPro 9 Hero Black, and we are going to be doing some fun action videos. As a matter of fact, I'm going ahead – and I'm going to be filming on this guy tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be doing our first video with the GoPro 9 Hero Black, which is a lot of fun for me. I wanted to add one of these to my repertoire um, for a very long time. This is the 9. So the cool thing about this is as a vlogger, um, it has a big screen in the back, but also a screen in the front so I can see what I'm doing. So I plan on doing some more adventures, but this is today's show and tell. I got some cool accessories with it. I got this cool, cool case, but we're going to be going out there, and tomorrow I'm going to be filming my first video with today's show and tell, and this is, once again, the GoPro uh, Hero 9 Black, and this is today's show and tell. Uh, next week, we should have a guest on the show, so stay tuned for that. I'm working it out right now. We're going to have a fun guest with us. I'm not going to tell you anything about it because things do change. Things have happen with the schedule. But we're going to be trying to bring on a guest every week. But until we get to that point, just stay tuned, stay ready, and get ready 
now for the next year. Nate, are you ready? I'm ready, Nate man. I ready. got this thing ready to go, dude. He's excited. Are, are, I'm excited, are you, are you guys. It? Yes, this is now. Looking forward to the results. I've been thinking. So, Bubba, I'll let you know how it turns out, and then you'll be able to watch it. I'm a little curious about the sound, um, but for, like, action shots, I'll be using this camera. And, I mean, the, uh, I'll be using this camera for regular, this stuff from action. I'm going to film some cool stuff. So, you know, it's just something I've always wanted to add to my repertoire. Uh, the next thing is the drone, and then Travel Man Dan will be complete, and we'll see what happens. But for right now, we're going to continue to do the beer show. And, guys, this brewery is one of my favorite breweries. It is from Northern California. It hails from a little town called Eureka. It's a fun place. We've done several of their beers. Each one yep. scores a high score. It gets above the grade, and they got some delicious stuff. I can't wait to go visit. But until then, we're going to go. And I'm talking about this one is called from Lost Coast Brewery, Downtown Brown. Yeah, look at that guy, dude. Look at that distorted face from that. A Salvatore Dali. <laughs> he looks like he's been drinking. He's a boozer. Nate's got one. We are pumped up. And this is what we're reviewing. Nate, let's take a look at it. Right away, I noticed one thing is it's a five point five percent alcohol. Okay. Now, this is a fun thing that we haven't done in a while. Got the red bottle opener, the famous red bottle opener. Okay. How do pull this I, guy I, out? I didn't use the one you gave me. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. You may use, use it next time. Let's go ahead and crack this open. I'll take a whiff and tell you what I think of my first smell. All right. Caramel. It's a brown ale. I don't really smell much come out of it. It's got a, you know, a little bit of light. Nutty flavor coming out of it. Vanilla. Almost like vanilla, a weird caramel, home brew. Chocolate. Yeah. Coffee. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do smell a little bit of vanilla. Okay. But now let's go ahead. We got we downsized. Let's go ahead and pour this guy out. I bet it's gonna be real dark and thick. And I'll tell you what, I definitely miss the Danish people. Freak would love this one. As we take a look at it, it's exactly as advertised. A nice, delicious. Brown looking al, almost like a cream soda. It's got a really nice um, look to it. Not a lot of carbonation going on there. Okay, even brown all the way around. Let's go in for a sip, and I'll tell you what it tastes like. Ooh, oh, that's yummy. That is yummy. Okay, all right. First sip. I gotta say, the first sip, it's very um, it's very vanilla flavoring. Like Nate had said before, what he smelled, and I smelled it too, but I definitely taste it. It's got a little bit of a nut taste to it, light hint of a, I guess a hazelnut flavor or something. But um, you know, as I continue to taste my palate, it's like a never-ending flavor test, and it just keeps developing in my mouth and. Really, I can't say what exactly it is, but overall, I'm tasting vanilla. I'm tasting some nutty, multi flavor, and a very delicious first sip. Nate, what do you got? Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. There's a caramel in there, there's a vanilla. Um, but I, you know what? It's funny that you mentioned tobacco early, earlier because I taste tobacco here as well. Oh, really? It just, just there's like you know, a, yeah, a, a hint of it in there. Like it, maybe it's a subconscious thing with me now. But there's a tobacco flavor in that beer. I'm almost tasting like a hint of licorice. I don't know if that's maybe me or Anison or or some something weird flavor that weird kind of thing. Um, but anyway, moving on. Let's talk about next week's video. Next week's video is going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys are into this. Um, me and Nate were together in Vegas, and I'm putting out another Food Friday video next week. So stay tuned as you're going to be able to see Travel Man Dan and Nate go to White Castle. <laughs> That's right. You know, is that the symbol for White Castle? No, I just made it up. I like it, dude. White? How about this? White Sea. White, 
Oh, all right, well, all right, no, no gang signs on this show. All right. <laughs> so next week, check it out. It'll be Friday. We're going to be doing The White Castle. If you don't know, maybe you've seen the movie Harold and Kumar. This is Travel Man, Dan, and Nate. But maybe you're off in some other country and you've never seen a White Castle and what it exactly all the, uh, the hub hub is about. But it's these little burgers. And um, really excited about putting that out. It's always a pleasure being with my best friend right there. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to check that out. Fun episode. And let's go ahead. If you're just hopping on with us now, we don't have the viewership we normally do. But, hey, guys, just want to say thanks for staying with us, hanging with us. This is what we're drinking. Downtown Brown, if you're just hopping on. It's from Lost Coast Brewery. Really cool label. Let's go ahead and take another sip, and I'll tell you what I think. Man. You know, I'm not a huge fan of brown ales. There was a brown ale. Maybe the only one that remembers it on this show is Bubba. But I don't know if you remember uh, JDW Honey Brown. And uh, it was this honey-infused brown ale that came out with Red Dog and Red Wolf and all these weird beers. It was out of Rochester, New York. It's very similar to that, but not a bad taste. It's like it's – like, it's like, how do I say this in layman's terms? It's like almost a stout, but it just isn't a stout, if that makes any sense. But, hey, guys, now it's time for me to go to this day in history. Baro, I hope you're here because i got a great show. i got a fun segment of this day in history. Um, I know we're going to be bringing in a history teacher. You've seen him here on this show before, Mike Capella. He wasn't able to join us today, but that's okay. Maybe he can be on the show next week as the new this day in history teacher. But until then, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm not a professional. I'm not a teaster, teacher. I just like doing this this day in history. All right. See you next week, Nicholas. Thank you so much for hopping on. I appreciate it. Have a great week, and we'll see you around. Thank you. All right. Here we go. On this day in history, on May 21st, 19... All right. On this day in history, May 21st, 1792... Uzan on Japan's Shimeparoba Peninsula. I butchered the hell out of that. Sorry. Erupts, creating a tsunami, killing 15,000 Japanese. It's the deadliest volcano ever. Can you imagine that? Okay, a volcano erupting and then creating a tsunami. And, uh, you know, this is 1792, so the infrastructure of homes, buildings, um, just everything in general is just not as well built as it is now. Um, so they have, um, you know, weather technologies to alert people. But back then in 1792, they had no idea, and it's unfortunate, uh, that 15,000 people passed away because of this er volcano erupting, which created a tsunami. It's just, um, you know, it's crazy that you might live your life in a split second because of a volcano or something like that. Um, something like this would, would take it. But I want to talk about that and bring it up. Now let's go on to the next one. In 1832, on May 21st, the first U.S. Democratic Convention was held in Baltimore. Yay! Go Democrats! Way to go! <laughs> and look who pops his head up. All right. Well, whatever party you are here in the United States, it doesn't really matter on this show. But on this day in history... May 21st, 1832, the first Democratic National Convention was held in Baltimore. All right, Nate, how do you feel about that? I'm sure they had a great time. Thank you. All right, go <laughs> on to the next one. <laughs> All right, on this day in history, on May 21st, 19, 1881, sorry, May 21st, 1881, guys, the American Red Cross was founded by Clara Barton. Yay! All right. That's pretty awesome because I am uh, a donor of the American Red Cross. Every 90 days they call me and I go and give blood. And what I really like about this is um, I have the rarest blood that they can find, but it is also the most commonly used. So um, I'm one of these weird things that's called O negative. It's the hardest one to, to have but it's also the one that can be used with everyone. So directly, um, the, the blood that they take or the plasma that they take, uh, they go ahead and they let me know uh, the next month 
who I helped out. They literally sent me like baseball cards of uh, either a children or people um, here in California that used my blood for their transfusion. And you never know. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know why more people do it. We're always in need of it. it it's every, I think, 90 days they call me. I set up an appointment. It takes about 20 minutes. I ravage the cookie and candy section afterwards. And you know what? At the end of the day, I help people. So, Nate, I don't know if that fits in your schedule, but if you can ever go and donate blood, I strongly recommend it. On this day in history, in 1881, the Red Cross was founded by Clara Barton. Good job, Clara. All right, moving on. On this day in history, on May 21st, 1927, aviator Charles Lindbergh, in the spirit of St. Louis, lands in Paris after the first solo air crossing of the Atlantic. Yes! Okay, and then a few years later, in 1932, after flying for 17 hours, 17 hours in an old not no smooth like virgin air, you know? Okay, okay, and this day, um, from Newfoundland, Amelia Earhart, the famous female pilot, lands near Londonderry, Northern Ireland, becoming the first transatlantic solo flight by a woman. Okay, how great is that? So, first of all, we have in 1927, Charles Lindbergh crosses the Atlantic. Okay, then a couple of years later, then comes Amelia Earhart, the first woman, a solo flight. So, I love aviation. I love um, both of these people are prominent figures in American history. And I think that the, in this day in history, that they should be renowned. And I think that it's fun to bring this up. And if you ever get a chance to watch some of these movies made in Hollywood about Amelia Earhart or Charles Lindbergh, I definitely recommend it. They may not give you um, the full facts and everything of that because it's hard to imagine what it would be like to live almost 100 years ago. But what it will do, give you an appreciation of the accomplishments that they be uh, that they not just in aviation but throughout history, and look where we are able to go from there. All right, moving on on this day in history on May twenty first, nineteen eighty, <clears throat> Star Wars Episode Five: Empire Strikes Back, produced by George Lucas, opens in cinemas in the UK and North America, which is probably. Next to Rocky, my favorite movie ever. I'll always watch it. I'll always watch it. It's probably the greatest of all the Star Wars movies, but it is definitely in my top two favorite movies ever. So, yeah, there it is on this day in history. It was released. I saw it in the theaters way back in 1980. And um, on this day in history, it was released and produced, and it opens in cinemas. On this day in history... Okay, not too long ago, on May 21st, 2017, Barnum and Bailey's Circus performs for the last time at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island after 146 years. 146 years, Nate. What do you think? It's a long time, dude. 146 years. I'd like to see 146 years on this earth. I mean... No, but the, this was the circus, so it had its run, and um, it's sad to see like a show like this have to pack up its bags and quit. I'm not sure what happened. I'm sure it was taken over by some kind of corporate thing or uh, bought out, and they probably named it something of another sponsor. Maybe it's the Apple Circus or, you know. Who the All Colgate. good things come to an end, my friend. All good. Ooh, he's, he's laying that on us, guys. He got real close to tonight. On the TMD show. Okay, gotcha, buddy. Okay, so that's that's this day in history. If you're just hopping on now, guys, this is what we're drinking. It's from Lost Coast Brewery, mm. which is in Eureka, California. It is a brown ale. It is called not Downtown bad. Brown. It's not bad. How's that, that, how's that eater not doing? I threw that shit in the trash. <laughs> I didn't. It's right here. Oh, all right. Um, I like the way this tastes. Okay, it's got a really? really, yeah, it's got a really robust kind of multi flavor to it. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Lost, never. Did. It's really um, 
it's not not an eccentric or exotic flavor. It's just got that really kind of sweet vanilla, malty, nutty for that. Whoa, packs home a good, good it, bite. It, it, and, it's uh, like a milkshake kind well, of. Well, we only have bar. Yeah. I think we only got Baro watching. Baro, good to still have you here. If you're still Love watching, you, I hope that you're doing good. Now it's time to go into what are you reading? What are you watching, guys? This is what I'm reading. I don't know if you guys are interested in this, but this is what I'm reading. I absolutely love this stuff. And I got these flashcards for shrubs, trees, and trees. Per perennials. Okay. I love all this stuff. Now, I work in the landscaping business here in California. So it's a lot of fun for me. And not only do I enjoy reading up about all the kind of trees, shrubs, and perennials, but it's kind of neat to see them because then when you actually get to see them in the field, like you have something like this. Like, let's take a look. Now, not a lot of these trees. This is nationwide. We have the Cedrus didora. Okay. Now, this is more of a northeastern plan. Okay. It's an evergreen, right? It's native from the Himalayas. It's the sun. Okay. No critters, which is kind of cool. They give you these little flashcard and it just helps me become familiar with various trees. I like this. One. Uh, all right, we have the Celtius oxidelitis. Okay, blooms in the summer and spring. It's a uh, sandy, gloomy clay. It's in North America and it's got critters like butterflies and birds. So that's what I'm reading. Nate, are you reading anything these days? Just my phone. Just this phone. Okay, like a lot of people, or Nate, nothing wrong with that. The next thing I want to talk about is what are you watching? Guys, I'm watching one of the greatest shows I think I've ever seen. It's awesome. It's on Netflix. It's called Trial by Media. It's produced by George Clooney, and it's it's fun What's because a lot of there? the stuff that, I, that okay, a lot of this it's about cases that happened in the 80s and 90s, and you know even the 2000s, but that were um, you know widely publicized throughout media, whether it was in the courtroom or whether it was like uh, just the person was. Something OJ? like a movie star that they couldn't, you know, what's that? Like OJ? Exactly. Like perfect example. Like OJ. But it's a lot, but it's cases that you've never heard of, right? It's cases that were, um, you know, widely watched at the time. And then we kind of just shoved off and moved on. And unfortunately, we're sad. But uh, definitely, if you, if you have some time and you're looking for some kind of of, and you like that kind of new crime documentary, Trial by Media is what I'm watching. I strongly recommend it. I'm enjoying the hell of it. And uh, it's a great show. Nate, what are you watching? Uh, not much. The Phillies lost tonight. I was going to try and watch that. And the other thing I'm watching yeah, is if anybody watches Netflix for kids, Pocoyo. I watch that. I don't know. How is it? I don't know. It's great for five-year-olds, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Baba, thank you for so much for checking in. I'm um, glad you enjoyed that fish fry in Buffalo. Thanks for stopping by. Now, guys, it's time to go ahead and whack down the downtown Brown. We're going to wind down the show. I'm going to go ahead and give it a score, and then I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know what we think of this beer and then the quote of the week. It's got a good taste to it, Nate. All right. Going with we'll the see. taste. I love the sweet maltiness that it brings. Now, yeah. after I took a big, healthy swing, I think it's got more malt in it than any other that's going out. I think it tastes really sweet. Okay, if you like sweet, but not sweet like citric sweet. Not sweet like sugary. Sweet like malty. And I kind of like that. Now, it's not very hoppy, so I definitely don't like that because I can miss that. I like hoppy beers, but we're not judging on that. We're judging strictly on what it tastes. I think the sweet caramel vanilla malty twist, almost like a spiced rum would taste, is a nice flavor when you're drinking a beer. So I'm going to go ahead and give it an even score of a 3.5.
Nate, what do you got on this guy? I'm going to do a 2.5. Uh, first of all, I'm not a fan of brown ales, brown lagers. Uh, it's not really my thing. And this one, I think it's quite pedestrian. 2.5. 2.5, okay. All right, going with the price. Going with the price. Now, you have a nice bottle. It's not a big bottle, whatever. It's a regular 11.7 fluid ounces, whatever it is. But uh, 12 fluid ounces, okay? Brown bottle. For me, you talked earlier about a green bottle being the thing. I think the brown bottle is the thing. Um, you know, the price for this one was $2.25 because I bought it in a single pack. Not not the most expensive, but not the greatest price. I'm going to go ahead and give it a, a 3.0. Nate, what do you got? Uh, I'll give it a 3.5. So I paid – I got a single from the local, I guess, well, the national uh, chain here. Um, and I think I got it for $2.40. So, yeah. you know, it's not the greatest price in the world. But, again, when you're buying a single like that, you're going to get charged more. I think a six-pack would probably be the eight ninety nine dollars range, which would be pretty acceptable. But I'm going to go 3.5. It's not blowing my doors off, and it's not offensive. Makes it, makes it, yeah, because California's about is 50 cents, so a little bit higher. Yep. Now let's go with design, okay? Hey, hey, you can't, I mean, especially with my haircut right now, I mean, I look like this guy, right? I mean, you do. And every time you get go like this, right? Okay, I got the Bye-bye. banana. I got the banana chin. I'm looking like downtown Brown. That's who I look like, right? Do you, okay. do you remember Downtown Julie Brown? Downtown Julie Brown was awesome on MTV. I think it's awesome, great art. I like the Salvador Dali look. Yep. I like that it's just a I sticker so. label. I like the Lost Coast Brewery label. That's a great look. Uh, they tell you right in the bottom right-hand corner, looking straight on the bottle, that it's 5% alcohol. I love this drunk bastard on the can or the bottle. It's just really, just really grabs me right away downtown brown and then he's slammed he's having a good time i mean look at that the sky's looking beautiful he's wearing a freaking purple suit come on forget about it okay yeah when mtv played music ain't that right baba i missed that one um i'm gonna go ahead and give downtown brown on the label a 5.0 go ahead nate what do you got for Damn, design 5.0. Uh, <clears throat> so i'm gonna do a 4.0 i think it's cool I don't think it's at the level of perfection like Travel Man Dan does, but that's cool. So, yeah, 4.0 for me. All right, I got a cartoon. Nate, it's just me and you. We have nobody in the room. Let's still keep rolling on. Oh, good, All man. Right. We're good. Accessibility. Now, this beer is widely popular in Northern California, but you're not going to find it anywhere else. As a matter of fact, I asked a couple of people back east. They couldn't find it. Lost Coast Brewery is an amazing brewery, but it's one of those micro breweries that serve food, and they're only distinct to that area. So I'm going to go ahead and unfortunately give it a 2.0 on accessibility. I think it's kind of cool that you can't find it anywhere, but for this show – Ranking accessibility means you find it in a lot of places. I'm going to go ahead and give it 2.0. Nate, what do you got? 1.5. 1.5. Given it all yeah, wizard. I, I, I okay. think this extends as far east as Las Vegas, which is not east at all. I would imagine nobody east as Las Vegas has this beer at all. So 1.5. Okay. All right. The TMD X Factor. I love Lost Coast Brewery. I think they got some great beers. I think that um, should probably make it up to Eureka within the next year or so. I think that they cool. bring, yeah, I think they bring something to the table. I don't, I don't know what it is. The artwork on their beer, the product is always good. It's never bad. The taste is never bad. So you know what you're Agreed. getting with this brewery. Yeah, you're not, you're not getting a bad beer. The problem with it is that the accessibility is so low. But I'm not going to hold that against them. I'm going to give them a good score and a, a better score. I'm going to give them a 3.5 on the TMD factor just because the product is so good. Nate, what do you got? Uh, it's it's a tough one for me. I'm going to go middle of the road. I'm going to go 2.5. I think it's an ascending brewer. Um, I don't think they're quite there yet. I think they have more to do. They have more to prove. Uh, so right now their beer quality is okay. The labeling, the designs are pretty interesting, but they're not overwhelmingly cool. So I'm going to go 2.5. Really? Yeah, I, I Dude, think it's I little, it. for for me, it's it's just middle of the road. I I, I don't know. It 
it hasn't grabbed me the way that I thought it would. I love it. I love the artwork. Um, I think that their 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 taste is spot on. I think they just need to to work on their accessibility, like most breweries. And I think that this could be a huge, huge breakthrough. Really score, guys. Nate, you're flashing yours. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 17. It is not bad. It ranks above a 16. So there it is for the downtown Brown. Nate, what was your final score on the downtown Brown? 15. Not my favorite. Not a big fan of brown beer. I do like Lost Coast. I agree with Danny. Uh, but it's just kind of underwhelming to me. So 15. Ooh, shucks. I, I'd, ra I'd rather, much rather a Rolling Rock. So that says a lot. Okay. To each their own. That's why we love doing it. That's why we love keeping score. Um, this is what we did. Rolling Rock scored an 18. And the Downtown Brown scored a 17. We had a fantastic show. Nate, you just hung out with us. You ate that chili. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, really appreciate it. This, this is I know we, we do eat it or not, but it's becoming more and more of a popular thing to have you on throughout the show. Good for you, Bubba. Thanks for hopping on. Can't wait until next week. I'm going to leave you guys with the quote of the week, and the quote of the week comes from a famous Western actor and director named Will Rogers. As I get ready to go and do the Gene Autry Museum, which is, a, is a, another actor. He said this. He said, uh, don't let yesterday take up too much of today. And I think that's a really cool and, and important uh, quick quote when you think about it. Because people say that all the time. But to really conceptualize that and to really think about that is, you know, don't, don't worry about what happened yesterday. Obviously, you know, if it's something traumatic in your life and you have major PTSD, it's not so simple to say that, but I'm talking about the simple things. The simplicity of life is beautiful, and the fact that you're going to continue to live in the now. So whatever you're at now is past what was yesterday. So if you think too much of what yesterday is, living in the now, your head's going to freaking hurt. You're probably going to be emotionally distraught. So don't weigh too much on it because you have too much to look forward to as opposed to look back to. You can't go back and change it. You just, you, there's no way I can do it. I just, I can't even go back to 10 minutes ago when I said some things that I said. So why would you worry about it? So don't let yesterday take up too much time of today because you got some living to do. And um, yes, great job. Hope your gut heals up, Nate. <laughs> Thanks, Bubba. Too. Yeah, Bubba's awesome. Well, yeah, no, and I think it's just a simple quote. I wanted to leave the show with that. Um, I was inspired when I read it. I'm inspired when I think about it because, you know, everybody thinks about yesterday. And, um, you know, you don't want to spend too much time on it because you're forgetting about where you're living now and looking forward to the future. Thank you so much, Nate. Do you have anything else to say before we take off? The past is the past. That's it. I love it. Past is the past. Thank you so much, my friend, for hopping on the show. We'll continue to go. We'll go ahead and uh, see you guys next week. Next but for week. right now, thank you so much, Nate, for hopping on and being part of the show. Thank you guys for stopping by and checking out our beer review and our fun show. I'm Travel Man Dan. Remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Bye, guys. Later.